What's going on, Tribe? My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia, and we are the co-owners of Glamorina. Glamorina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired activewear, intentionally designed to, to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes. Welcome to Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, motherhood, self-care, and everything in between. Yes. Now, before we dive into today's episode, we always want to do a mental health check-in. So as we do this, we want you guys to do the same thing, check in with yourself, see how you're doing. So this week, Kia, it's a new month. How are you? How's your mental health? Yeah, a new month. So happy that we are in April. I swear March is like the longest month, especially when you're a teacher in school. Is there's there are no um vacations or breaks really. So I'm I'm pr- I'm feeling pretty good because spring break is coming up and I'm just looking forward to that. <laughs> yes. How about you, Nicole? How are you? I'm doing good. My life is coming together. Um same. I'm ready for spring break. I'm taking off for um just kids out of school. So I definitely need to have something going on (laughs) instead of just having her home. So I'm excited. I'm good. I'm in a good space mentally. Good. That's so good. Yep. So let's get into today's episode. So today's episode of Behind Glam Arena, Moms on a Mission. We want to talk about our experience as Black women going to the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. So many studies have shown that Black women feel that they they are heard and treated less than their white counterparts simply due to discrimination. I love this topic. I'm sure we yes. all can relate. So excited to get into this. Me too. I love this topic because I know that I've experienced it. My mom was just talking to me about an experience um, with her and her doctor. So I thought this would be a great topic for us to discuss today. Um, and so I found this article from um, berkeleynews.com. It's a, a slightly old, it's 2019, but they were doing an interview with with a Black woman and author, Tina Sachs. She wrote a book in 2019 called Invisible Visits, Black Middle-Class Women in the American Healthcare System. And her book really dives into how middle-class Black women still face racial discrimination and things like that at the doctor's office. Um, She talked about in this article, it's like an interview with the author. So Tina says that, you know, there's a lot of study about um, racial discrimination in the healthcare system and poor black women, but not a lot about middle class black women. It's like assume that, OK, well, middle class black, black women, you got money, you guys are fine. And that's just not the case. Um, unfortunately, middle class black women like all black women face a lot of racial discrimination and feeling like they're not heard or dismissed um, at the doctor's office. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. Yeah, definitely. This is so real. (laughs) So in the article, Tina states, there's so much large scale data showing racial disparities in healthcare. But I was more interested in telling these women's personal stories to understand their challenges in healthcare settings and how they manage them. One of the running themes in the book is that Black women cannot prove They are being they're being discounted or denied Mm -hmm. treatment, but have this persistent nagging feeling that something is amiss and they're not being treated the way they should. So the book Mm -hmm. looks at why this is happening and what we can do to change it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting. I love the the interview and I, I really do want to read this book. Um, I love how the author discusses that there is like a medical textbook that was published in 2010. Um, it's called nursing, a concept based approach to learning. And it just, it talks about how um, certain um, racial groups, how they react differently to like acute and chronic pain. So um, this author is basically discussing how doctors and nurses are pretty much being trained in a way that depending on your what race that you come from, your racial background, you might experience pain, you know, at a greater or less. Um, and that black women are just like stereotypically, you know, shown that, you know, we can handle pain. And but exactly. because of that, 
our doctors um, or the healthcare system is not listening to us. And that, you know, increases our chances. We have a higher mortality rate after birth. Um, African-American women do, um, or even us dying after birth. So our children dying or us dying because something is wrong. And again, doctors yeah. aren't believing us, you know, because yeah. they no, think we're good. Or it, it's, it's a real thing. And I, and I think that's one where we need to, have more more doctors especially in in specialist level doctors because Mm -hmm. there's a there's a different tier um and then also being conscious of who we have as our providers and what you just said made me think about serena williams when she was um, going through having her child she mentioned this and she yeah you know her she's upper class when it comes to like financial status. Um, and she felt this discrimination. She felt this disparity as well and not being listened to or heard Mm -hmm. when she felt something was off. Um, but for me personally, I have not maybe in one situation experienced this because my OBGYN black Mm -hmm. delivered my baby black Mm -hmm. current OBGYN black. So in primary care is not black. And I have seen some things in her. She's like um, Middle Eastern. Mm-hmm. I have definitely seen some things in her where she's like, oh, no, you shouldn't be concerned. No, that's just anxiety. But I'm like, are you sure? I, I've been having yes. chest pains for years. Um, and she's like, no, I think it's just anxiety or um, maybe take in acids. Maybe it's just heartburn. Mm-hmm. And and I think for me personally, I'm still going to follow up on this because I think you we, we know our bodies, right? We know mm-hmm. if something is different or off if it's not normal yeah. and like you said you're right they think that we're so strong and so tough that yeah we sh- we, sh- we should be okay to bear that pain yeah definitely i like um the author again her name is tina Sachs. she wrote this book invisible visits black middle class women in the american healthcare system um the article that we're referencing is an interview with this author and they do ask her you know why are you focusing on black middle class women And she says being a racial minority is usually equated with being poor. And it's also assumed that black middle class women should be fine because they're not poor, but they're not fine. They face substantial health challenges and differences in health outcomes. My work points to the persistence of racial discrimination across class. So Serena Williams, it doesn't matter if you if you're one of us, if you're a celebrity, one of us, meaning like an everyday average mm-hmm. person, a celebrity, doesn't matter how much money you have. Um, racial discrimination in the healthcare system does go across class. And the result is lower life expectancy and higher rates of infant mortality and also highlights the unique challenges women in general and black women in particular face trying to be taken seriously and get their needs met. And you mentioned about Serena. She talks about that, um, that after it says that Williams was at risk for pulmonary embolism and she was experiencing shortness of breath after her emergency C-section. She recognized the symptoms and asked for a CT scan and a blood thinner, but the medical staff did not take her seriously. Blood started pooling inside of her which eventually led to another emergency surgery. And I've heard stories like that. I've heard stories of either infants dying Mm -hmm. or the woman dying. I know there was a black um, judge. She was a judge on a TV show. I believe her son's wife died at childbirth. I forgot um, the lady. She was a popular uh, black female judge on TV, but she had talked later about how her son's wife passed away after giving birth to their child again it's be- what's happening and why this is so important is just because not only do we feel like we're not being heard, but there's no way to prove mm-hmm. really that we're not being heard, which is what you, you know, what you mentioned that the author says, there's really no way to prove. We just know, right. It's like the nagging this. Um, and if we don't become advocates of our own health and stand up while it, it would be better to have black doctors and black nurses and black OBGYNs because they know, but if you're in a case, say like me, that there was just no black people around in the medical system where I live, um, you really have to be an advocate for your own health yeah. because it's just so many times that I've experienced that I felt like they were ignoring my pain level. Yeah. And I, I will say like that, that is definitely the, the norm. I, I do want to give some non-black doctors and specifically white doctors. There are some that will root for you. You know, there's, there's not, yeah. it's not the popular, it's not the majority, but when I had to see a high risk doctor during my pregnancy, the guy was white and he, he went above and beyond to make sure I got the hair, the care that I needed and to make sure mm-hmm. to give me that, um, 
the, the options that other white doctors did not. Mm -hmm. So there are some that will advocate just like in anything, when it comes to black disparity and issues, there are some, so I do want to shout them out because we have some allies sometimes. Yes. So I just want to, to shout that out because it's important to have those people mm -hmm. and know those people to say, okay, if I got to go to a white doctor, who's the best or who's the most yeah. black people friendly, <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. But it is, it's, it's, it's a tough thing because like you said, in, in areas where like you live, or I'm sure a lot of people where you don't have access to either black doctors or mm -hmm. doctors who will advocate for us outside of our yeah. race. Um, what are you supposed to do to get the care you right. need? Yeah, I agree. To save your life. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I and I agree. There are obviously there's great um, non-black doctors out here. One nurse like really pushed my mom to get um, a mammogram, even though they didn't feel anything or anything like that. She was still like, I, "You need to just still get a mammogram and follow up." Mm -hmm. And because of that, they did find stage one uh, breast cancer in one of my mom's breasts and stage zero, but it's still something there. So yes, absolutely. There's, there's great doctors and nurses. Um, but unfortunately in a, the bigger picture, the bigger system, so many, so many of these um, circumstances have happened where black women come in, complain about pain and they're ignored and we are dying <laughs> at higher rates than other women. And so I know the author does say, you know, what's something that we can remedy this? And she says, you know, we have to be honest about what's happening and to train physicians and medical staff to see the patient who walks in the door, not just as a collection of biological indicators and genes, you know, because the doctor is like, okay, oh, she's black, she's African American, yeah. so she's this, 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 and just like having these set stereotypes. Yeah. But to understand the, um, the social environment that leads to poor health in the first place and not to blame the patient for their health problems. So she had mentioned there's one of the ladies that she spoke with while she was writing her book said that, you know, the doctors kept basically telling her, oh, it's your weight. Like you need to lose weight. She was going to the doctors complaining about knee problems. And that happens apparently with a lot of these cases for black women. I didn't realize that, that the first jump for a lot of black women is like, well, it must be your weight um, that's causing whatever X, Y, Z issues. And she finally, this woman finally pushed to get like a MRI or something. And it turns out she had like tumors, like two tumors in her knee. It had nothing to do with her weight. So again, I think not only just training medical staff, but uh, pushing us as black women. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. You have to be an advocate. You cannot go to the doctor and just think that they're going to just know and do everything for you. I, I would suggest writing things down. So yeah. if you're having like consistent, like nausea or there's just, there's just aching pain. Cause you know how we are as black women. Yeah. It's like, Oh, there's a pain, but you know, I don't want to, mm -hmm. I don't want to make a big fuss. I don't want to like go to the doctor or, you know, what if they, because there's a fear that they're going to just brush us off. Oh, it's nothing. But yeah. we, we can't be like that. I would say if you can, if you have access, if you're able to go to the doctor, you have a regular doctor. Um, if you're experiencing something, write it down maybe the times, the days of when you're experiencing this pain or whatnot and go to your doctor. Yeah. And and talk to your what doctor. you, what you did before, what you ate before, like you have to kind of yeah. unfortunately do the work a little bit yourself because mm -hmm. then you can take that and say, okay, every time I eat X, Y, Z, I feel this mm -hmm. every time mm -hmm. I do this, I feel this. So yeah, you're right. You, we kind of have to monitor things as close as possible, document things ourselves because going back to what the article said, we have no proof. So yeah. if we can get as much evidence, as much documentation as possible to track what we're experiencing and when and what is happening during that time, we can at least give them a little more information to better help us or hopefully better help mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And in my case, I definitely have experienced this. I would say, you know, it, I can count it on one hand, but I, it's a terrible feeling when you go to the doctor. It was at a time where... I was going to a, um, a doctor in Bethesda. It was primarily white, you know, upper class. And I come in there and not that I don't belong in the space, but I felt I was made to feel that way. The first thing that happened is they were supposed to check me in and the lady never checked me. In. I sat there and waited for like 45 minutes and then finally got up. And that's my fault for waiting so long. Mm -hmm. But I finally got up like, what's going on? And then it turns out they hadn't even checked me in. So it was like wow. that. And then I went and saw the doctor 
And she's like, you know, what's going on? Because I have, like a lot of women, I had chronic UTIs and um, chronic yeast infections. And it was like, no matter what I was doing, you know, vitamins and probiotics and stuff, like things, that just happens. Um, and I was trying to give this doctor a little bit of background. Like, I get these a lot. This is, she's like, oh, no, I know. She cut me off and was like, I can see, I can read that in your file. And it was just so wow. like... You don't even care. I'm trying to let you know that I'm knowledgeable what's happening in my body, but you know, I'm trying to find some some things to do so that we can maybe prevent some of the stuff from happening. And it was just like so dismissive. And that has happened to me a couple of times. I know that I've just talked to my mom about it and she had to go to the hospital, the ER for a UTI again. And some people might not realize like those bladder infections, they really can be super painful. You know what I mean? So she had to go to the doctor and it was still just like, um, who goes to the emergency room for a UTI? Like her, her doctor told her that No, <laughs> but she followed up with her regular doctor. He was like, well, why would you go to the emergency room? I've actually been in the emergency room in college when I've had UTIs. So I get it, but it's still, um, it's just so dismissive. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's really disheartening when you yeah. feel like something is happening and nobody believes me, you know what I mean? That's so crazy. And it, it's just, it's, it's one enlightening. And I'm glad we're doing this podcast episode for people like, not necessarily like me, but I haven't directly experienced it. I obviously mm -hmm. know it happens. No people is yeah. happy to hear stories all the time, but because I don't, I've never really experienced that. Yeah. Um, and I'm also tough on the, on the doctor's office. Like mm -hmm. if I'm waiting too long, I'm like, here's the What's thing to <laughs> acknowledge and keep in our mind. I don't care if you're using insurance. I don't know. I don't care if you're using like Medicaid, we're mm -hmm. paying these people. They're mm -hmm. getting a lot of money off of us one way or another. So when I go to a doctor's office, I'm hard on them. I'm like, look, okay, I'm it's taking too long. I'm going to mm -hmm. just book somewhere else or I'm going to reschedule. And then they're like, Oh no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no, I'm going to be on top of, we have to, unfortunately be on top yes. of this. what's taking so long. This lady came in bef after me. Mm -hmm. Why has she been seen before me? So we just kind of have to, like we said already advocate for ourselves in every aspect of the healthcare system, whether it's from being checked, be not being checked in waiting too long or mm -hmm. making sure that people, the doctors understand the pain that we're experiencing in trying to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, advocate for yourself, advocate for each other. So while you might not ex experience as much, again, with you having some experience with black doctors and whatnot, someone like you, if you hear someone's story, if they live near you or whatnot, you're able to say, hey, I might have a doctor, another doctor for you. So again, mm -hmm. regardless if you have experienced racial discrimination within the healthcare system or not, you know someone that maybe has, that's why we're having this conversation. So if we not only advocate for ourselves, let's advocate for each other. You know, if you hear your friends saying something's going on, because they always revert to anxiety. I mean, I've, I've had that. I've, I've had chest pains and different issues. I've had to wear a heart monitor because something was going on in my heart. And thank God, nothing, it was nothing serious, but I still am glad that I did it all. You know, mm -hmm. it might seem like too much. Don't think, don't no. ever feel like you're, it's too much. Like, you know, you need a heart monitor for 30 days. Like, and it was perfectly fine. Okay. Well, I got the peace of mind though, right. that there's nothing going on because at first I was feeling like, you know, my heart is, you know, my heart rhythm is, is off. So yeah. I think to just not only advocating for yourself and your health, but don't ever feel like that. Whatever you're saying is too much. If you feel like I would just like for black women to go in the doctor and not be scared to yeah. ask the questions and to be honest, I went recently went to my doctor and I just laid it all out. I was like, listen, these are all the different issues. I know I'm getting older, mm -hmm. but like, how often should I be coming to the doctor to get your regular checkups to get um a physical? She said once a year. And she was like, no, you're not wrong. Like, it's good that you're coming here. You're, you're asking these questions. You're telling me, I was telling her everything, girl, my ear hurt this, mm -hmm. my knee. I eat this, what's happening. She did blood work. Like you just have to, and don't feel like it's too much. If you're feeling yeah. pain, if you're feeling something, talk about it. It might be something small, but at least you'll have some type of awareness of like what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%. And I've, I've had the same thing, like for years, my chest, I've been having these chest pains and it hasn't gone away. I've been to numerous doctors, emergency mm -hmm. rooms, and thankfully I have gotten like the EKGs and, yeah. you know, all of those things. And still 
you know, nothing has come up, which is fine, but I'm going to continue as I continue to feel pain. I'm going to continue to go to different doctors, different specialists, just to to check on it, to monitor it. Um, And I was going to say something else. So just the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Any non-black doctors listening to this, like it's all about having the conversation first. So people it's awareness, right? It's awareness, Mm -hmm. letting doctors know, or the community know, like this is an issue, whether you, this is the first time you're hearing about it or not. Mm -hmm. It's an issue. Don't judge people based on stereotypes or preconceived notions of what they can tolerate, you know, as as pain. This is an issue. It's people, women are losing, not just women, but black people are losing their lives due to this issue. Mm -hmm. So just take this as an eye opener to listen more um, Mm -hmm. and have the same slate that you would if a white person came into your office. Yeah. And I like that you said that it's like a message to the doctors because we're not, we're not downing the doctors in this article. It said, you know, shouldn't, shouldn't we be blaming the healthcare system? It's the system. And she says the author, um, Tina Sachs, she says, you know, yes. Um, Doctors are, physicians are under a lot of pressure. They have 15 minutes to get their patients in and out. And, you know, it's not enough time. Like doctors don't like it. Patients don't like it. But it says, if we accept that it's deeply flawed, everyone should be at equal risk for the problem it presents. Everyone deserves the same chance to get the service, whether it's good or bad. And frankly, the United States absolutely has the capacity to do better. Yeah. So we can do better. There's other countries that have, you know, free health care and things like that. We won't go into all of that, but we can do better. Um, and we're not blaming just the doctors, but we are asking, like you said, for doctors that when you have a patient, especially a black woman coming in, that you don't look at her as like, oh, you know, these genes or this or her background, but look at her as a person first and that perhaps she's telling the truth. Perhaps her pain or the things that she's experiencing is real. You know, even if you're a medical head, you're like, oh, you know, it's just stress. Okay, maybe it's just stress. Maybe it's not because we have so many cases where it wasn't just stress and it wasn't just anxiety. And you and I both know someone who lost her baby because I believe she said and was telling the doctor something that's going on. Mm -hmm. They were not believing her. She gave birth and the baby died like a few Mm -hmm. hours later. And so... That is exactly what we're talking about. And just this last, my last example, when I was um, in my mother's stomach and she, um, it was close to me the time from, you know, from my birth, but not quite there. She complained, she had a lot of pain and she complained to the doctor. She went to the doctor, they checked her out. They were like, no, you're fine. Like they were trying to send my mom home. And my mom was like, no, I'm not going home. Something is going on with this baby. If I leave and go all the way home, like something might happen. So yeah. She forced them to like make her stay. And in the middle of the night, they came in a crash cart saying that the umbilical cord was wrapped around my neck and I was choking. Yeah. And they had to do an emergency C-section. So that's why, again, when it ended on that, that we just have to, you, we know inside something's off. So as black women don't ever feel ashamed or scared to go to the doctor fight for yourself. Like you said, don't be sitting there in the waiting room forever. Yeah. Yes. Fight for yourself. You deserve to be in that space. You deserve good quality healthcare like everybody else. So you, you, you know, we have to do it. We have to do it for our, ourselves, but don't for let sure. anyone out here make you feel bad or scared to go to the doctor or to ask the, the, the weird questions, mm-hmm. know what's going on with your health. Yeah. And be an advocate for yourself. Yeah. And always listen to your body, listen to your body, listen to your instincts. It's, it's a reason we have those is the intuitions, like mm-hmm. something's off. Listen to that. And I don't care if you got to go to five doctors, it's a little more work, but it could save your life. So absolutely love this. Um, yes. Wow. Um, thank you guys so much for listening, tuning into today's episode of behind Glamorina moms on a mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Yes. Also love this topic so much. Be sure to visit Glamorina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough. And until next time, stay well, tribe.